She did it, guys. She actually did it. It's funny how the tides turn, doesn't it? If you remember Ebony K. Williams, she drew a lot of controversy by saying these comments. How women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build, when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus If he owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it, if he owns the bus, See, he that's owns it. But now it seems that she wants women, especially black women, to learn from her mistake. And there is a lesson that she's sharing that I feel needs to be said. The older you get as a woman, the less likely you are to get a million. Now, I'm not saying you can't get a million. What I'm saying is that the odds aren't in your favor. There are beautiful 40 year old women out here that can get a million. Just because they can do it doesn't guarantee you can. Let's roll the clip. The reality that needs to be said out loud is that as black men age, their desirability increases. Thus, their optionality of women is always expanding. And the exact opposite is true for black women. Mm -hmm. As we age, doesn't matter how much money we accumulate, our degrees or professional accolades, the reality is, is that our marriage and partnership market value is depreciating with every passing year. No matter how good we look, no matter how fit we are, men are still seeing primarily our presumed dwindling fertility as a knock against us. And speaking of fertility, that is another reason that I want younger black women to seek marriage and partnership in college or right after, if that's what they choose. Because the number of college educated black men is so low when compared to black college educated women that we're all gonna be targeting the same small pool of men. And as we heard today, on most campuses, there's like seven black women students for every one black man student. Y'all do the math. So here's my advice. If you are a young black woman in college and you know in your heart and in your head that you want to prioritize family, I suggest that you simultaneously pursue that MRS degree right along with that BA or JD. Because the handful of black college age men that actually do desire to get married soon and they do share that value system and family is a priority for them too. Y'all, that is an incredibly small pool and it's shrinking as you get older. And by the time you reach my age, 40, you will be faced with different choices relating to life partnership and motherhood. Now, I'm not saying that delaying marriage or motherhood is a bad option, but it's one that comes with its own consequences. And our women deserve to know on the front end of their decision making instead of on the back half. So what Ebony Williams was trying to say here is that the same level of necessity that you put in your career, you need to put into getting a man. Because when you're in college, when you're in your early to late 20s, early to late 30s, that is prime time. That's what I call it. It's prime time. It's time for you to get a man. So you don't end up like Ebony K. Williams, who's single and may or may not want a man. And if you talk to women that are in their 40s and don't have a man and genuinely want one, some of them may come across as better, mean, upset at the world. But you know why? They are speaking from a place of hurt. They are speaking from a place of pain because they had an opportunity to get a man and they didn't. They made bad mistakes on the dating market and now they're sitting on the sidelines. That's the reason why a lot of women that are older and middle-aged 
get mad at men for dating younger women because your competition as an older woman is a younger one. Why would you be okay with an older man dating a younger woman? Because they are your competition. So you're competing on the dating market against women. They're in prime time. You're on the sideline. You need to prioritize getting a man just like you prioritize your career. Because at the end of the day, ladies, it's nothing worse than growing up 40 and alone. 50 and alone because what's gonna happen you're gonna get older who's gonna take care of you you don't have a man who's gonna take care of you when you're older when you're in your golden years and especially if you don't have any children think about that but a woman with a man that man can step in and take care of she's telling you things as a woman that she wished she could have gotten and for her to come out and say this is monumental. The reason why it's monumental is because it's coming from a woman. It's not coming from a man. Women are used to hearing this from a man. And they refute it. But when you hear it from a woman, it's different. And you're upset because she told you some real stuff. That's why the internet is upset. You're upset because she told you some stuff. Well, that's a hard pill to swallow that she gave you. Oh, so I want to bring this uh, comment that I found online that goes along with what we're talking about. So it reads, I friend zoned men that would have treated me like a queen. I once had a Russell that I cut off to be with a future. I used to get on the internet complaining about men and being bitter, just like some of y'all women. I used to play victim. And see that, this is the thing guys, a lot of women play the victim. You play the victim when it comes to relationships and men, but you don't remember the golden rule. You choose these men. You see what that first sentence is? You see what that first sentence was? I friend zoned a man who would have treated me like a queen because I wanted to go with a future. And some women make that same mistake. You date a future instead of dating the nerd or the dorky kid and clients. You, you go out with guys that live life on the edge instead of living life to the fullest. You go out with guys with a criminal record instead of going out with guns that have an academic ranker. You go out with men who can't really rub two nickels together, but yet you ignore the man who's a blue or a white collar worm. You ignore the men that can do for you, but you date men that don't. Continuing on, when my thought process changed, I started taking accountability for my choices. My reason for uplifting men is because I've actually encountered good men. I just didn't want them. I just didn't want them. I couldn't say I couldn't say it better myself. She encountered good men. She just didn't want them. You know who she wanted? Pookie and Ray Ray. Future. And that's the main issue with women today. The good guy has to clean up after the Pookie and Ray Ray. We don't get you before the Pookie. We get you after the Pookie. That's the issue. It's time to take accountability for your piss poor choices and me. Continuing on. I'm not the only woman that's real enough to admit this because women want to seem perfect. Instead of admitting that y'all fell for some messed up men, y'all rather spend y'all lives tearing down all men like they are all the same. So you get messed up and you get messed over by a bad guy or a few bad guys. You want to talk about all men until it's no men. You want to talk about all men like all men dated you. All men are responsible for your pain. We're not. We're not responsible for your pain. You're responsible for your pain. And that's the problem. That is the issue. Lack of accountability. You want to sleep with Pookie and Ray Ray. You want to lay down with dogs and end up with fleas. And then you want to blame everybody but yourself. It's your fault. It is your responsibility 
to do better. It is your responsibility to make better choices. It is your job to be the best candidate out on the dating market. Now, we all make mistakes. But when does it end? When do the mistakes end? That's the question I'll leave you with. We all make mistakes, but when does it end? When are we going to take accountability for our own actions and realize that it's nobody else's fault but mine? Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.